everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for yep. episode four of our Young Voices series. Um, as the as the country's only national service program for sports, we are we are privileged to work alongside UPSA sports member organizations like the partner we have today for today's episode, the Kensington Soccer Club, who, like us, believe that sports. Um, and great coaches are a uniquely powerful tool to help kids reach their potential, not just on the field, but in life. And um, for today's episode, we have a, a special treat and that we're gonna all be sharing uh, together for the first time, the viewing of a, of a short film, filmed by Michael Kane, who is a coach at the Kensington Soccer Club. And Michael uh, put together this really extraordinary film uh, in which we're going to have a chance to hear from his student athletes on some of those important issues and pressing issues of the day, some of the issues we've covered on some of our other episodes, like the impact that COVID's having on, on young people in their communities, on um, things like the absence of sports and being able to play and um, not being around your team, you know, youth violence and what that's doing to our communities. And before I throw it over to Michael, one of the things and, um, you know, uh, that I did have a chance to speak to some of these young folks uh, yesterday and to talk to Michael is that you know during challenging times, I feel like we think we're more, uh, more likely to, to pay attention to leadership and to think about the importance of leadership. And as I, I listened to these young people yesterday, and I feel like you're going to feel the same way after listening to, to them today, you're going to feel that um, we've got some amazing young leaders um, who are going to be on their way um, to helping us all address uh, these issues in some more, um, in, in some more robust uh, ways that are going to move the needle again on, on these important issues. So, so with that, I want to introduce you to Michael Kane And Michael, have you talk a little bit about the film, and, and then we'll get into the conversation. Um, this film is, it was called The Nick, The Sound of Time. It was named after a, a climate graphic song from the 60s. I want to say more like the civil rights movement and like that. And I did this film because it felt as though that the one voice that we never really hear about is the voice of the kids. Kids are all affected by their decisions by the adults, and we have to set those decisions. But the, it doesn't mean that they do not have a voice. And I wanted to capture their voices in this video and how they've been getting along through all the troubling times that America has been faced with recently. Wait, Michael, you're on mute. Um, and all, I think all of you are on mute, so we can unmute ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael, maybe before, before we get into the questions, since this is the first time um, all of you have seen this film, maybe we could just sort of let you all sort of just react to it. Let you all sort of react to it. Mario, your mic keeps lagging. Uh, yeah, that so that's bad. I'm going to yes. mute myself now. Okay. Um, yeah. so, this has been you guys' first time seeing this video. I've watched the video over, it seems like a hundred times over the course of me making it, but watching it tonight for the first time in this type of setting, it was really touching. Um, but what I would like to know from you guys right now is starting with Lewis and Julio, um, what's your take on the video? What do you think about it? Can you repeat that over again? Cause no one's mic. Okay. Um, in this type of set, Lewis and Julio. Um, All right. I'm asking. I want to you guys take. We want you guys take on the video. All right. And I'm asking. I'll start with you guys. After watching this for the first time, Julio. I'm gonna start with you. How do you feel about seeing this uh, video? I feel like inspirational about it. Like I feel like seeing myself in that as a video like gave me like joy. Like I felt like I was part of something special. I feel like um I like I feel grateful. Like I feel really happy about it. Like I feel like I could like I was a big part of the video. 
and everybody else. I'm proud of everybody else. Us, we did it as a family. Yeah. All right, Ryan, how do you feel? Uh, how did you feel? That's Ryan. There's two Ryans. Uh, you. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of felt proud of myself, honestly, for being in that video. I uh, told everyone about how I was feeling about this, and that's it. That's it was a great movie. Yeah, yeah. And Anara, how do you, Anara, how you feel seeing yourself on video for the first time? And you gave such, um, you're another person that, you know, you really got into, I mean, you really got into it. Um, let me know how you feel about it. Well, I really, the, every, the only thing that was going through my head was, yeah, I, I'd say it again if I was asked the same question. That's, yeah, my opinion still stands on all of it. So, yeah. Emmy and Ivana, how do you feel? Emmy. Emmy. Can you hear me? Like, I, like, I didn't, yeah, I didn't expect it to be like that emotional. Like, I signed up a little bit. Okay. Hennessy. What about you? How did you, how do you feel seeing this for the first time? You were actually, you and Emmy were the last two people that I had to interview. So Hennessy, you were actually the last person to be interviewed for this video. How do you feel after seeing it the first time? It's a lot more powerful than I thought. I didn't think that we could all just come together and make this one like beautiful thing out of the strategy like I didn't I didn't know we could do this so Noreen I'm gonna call on you next um what I think about the the little film was that it was touching and I felt like everyone was speaking out their feelings about what's happening in 2020 uh 2020 I was about to say 2021 um but I feel like everyone was just speaking about their feelings and how they felt about what's happening to Philly. Yeah. Anthony, um, you were one of, I believe I interviewed you the Friday after the election. If I'm not mistaken, you guys were at practice that day or it was either Friday after or the Friday before the election. How do you feel after seeing? I know we went through a lot that night with the people riding around with their motor with their motorcycles motorcycles on the field. But how you feel? How did you feel about the video and what you said? Uh, I actually feel great about what I said. I felt like I spoke my mind, which is something as kids we don't really get to say because of what adults will like. Adults will literally just stop everything. They don't want to. They don't want to hear our teenagers. Or a younger version's opinion, a younger person's opinion. Jocelyn, we're gonna come to you right now. And after seeing the video, how do you feel? Um, that video was absolutely amazing. I really loved it. It really, it really spoke about what's really happening and it's standing, it's standing like what's happening in the world right now. And I believe it was it was absolutely the best. And I will watch it over again if I can, which I will. <laughs> Honestly, everybody spoke their mind. Everybody has great speech, and they they really said what was really happening. So I loved it. And Samaya, we're gonna come over to you. How do you feel? Or how did you feel after seeing it the first? I mean, I mean, I really had a lot of fun when I was interviewing you because you really was not like, uh, like you at first you didn't want to do it. And then I kind of coached you into it. But now that you actually saw the product of your work, how do you feel? I was surprised because, as you know, like, I don't take nothing serious. I really don't. I joke about everything. So once once I saw that, it really, like, opened up my eyes. Like, it really was serious. Like, and everybody spoke their mind, told the truth about it. And I like that. And Esteban. If you would like, uh, would you like a translator at this time, sir? Um, I can, I can speak, I can speak English. 
Okay. Uh, well, uh, like, I think what's awesome, like, seeing other people talking and expressing themselves um, without thinking other might think about them. Um, I think it was great. I love it. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you guys know um, that when I started this film, um, Miss Pat called me one evening and she asked me about the film and to make the film. And instantly the idea popped in my head of what I was going to name it. And I kind of knew the direction, even, I mean, that very moment, it was like something clicked in my head that said, listen, you want to capture kids' voices. We never really listen to kids' voices. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I set out to do. Um, the purpose of me doing this is my mom loved this city. If you notice at the end, um, the video was dedicated to Susan Kane Farrar, that's my mother. And she passed away on May 30th, the day of that the riots actually started in Philadelphia. So when she passed away, it seemed like two minutes later, the city went up in an uproar and to know my mom, I mean, how much she loved the city and to see her, the city that she loved so much being torn apart, it broke my heart. But I wanted to get that the violence didn't stop there. It came to our neighborhood because we had the shooting death of Walter Wallace during production in the city of Philadelphia. And we actually had to stop practice for about a week. Um, but that's what this is one of the reasons why I did the video is I wanted to catch your voices. I wanted to get, um, you know, the essence of you. I remember Esteban, you came to me um, with uh, a five by seven card with all your answers. And I was like, how do you have a five by seven card and you don't know what I'm going to ask you? And I told you to throw it away. And you did excellent. Um, I have a story about each and every last one of you while filming this video that, you know, it touched my heart making it at times really, I really sometimes had to stop production, like putting a video together because I got choked up on some of your answers. It kind of hit home because I live in the same neighborhoods that you guys live in. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to move to a question to answer session. I'm going to ask you guys some questions um, about the video and about yourselves. And the most important thing is I want to hear from first, I want to hear from Julio. And I want to hear how long you guys have been um, with Kensington Soccer Club and how have um, and how long have you played soccer? For me, I've been a part of Kensington Soccer Club for the last four years. I've been playing soccer roughly since I was 43 years old and I'm 47. So when I started coaching, I started playing. And I want to hear from you and some of you guys. And let me hear from Julio first. All right. So I've been playing soccer since I was, I would say, about like 12, 13 years old, around that age. Um, I was playing football before I started playing soccer, but I moved into a neighborhood where there was no football, so it was all soccer. So I went outside, I see people playing soccer. I went over there and I seen Jim and everybody and they invited me to play. So I started playing. Little did I know I became a star. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I started playing during that age and I ain't gonna lie, it's been a long journey. Like it's been like, the best moment of my life. Like I, I met the best people in my life. Like, I agree. Some of the best coaches. Like it was, it's been amazing. And me being a coach myself, because I coach, I've been coaching since I was like 14, like in the summer. And then I, since to now, I still coach most of these kids here. Uh, I'm either teammates or I coached them before. So I'm proud of everybody here too. And yeah, that's my story. Uh, Janet, uh, Hennessy. Um, same question. How long have you been with Kensington Soccer Club and how long have you been playing soccer? You there? Hennessy, you're, you're muted. There you go. How long have you been playing soccer and how long have you, um, you been with Kensington Soccer Club? Um, I've been playing soccer for about like a year and a half. Um, I started a soccer with Kensington Soccer Club last winter, I think. I haven't been playing for that long, but it's been really good too. 
Um, I really gained like a lot of knowledge and a lot of skill with with the team. So now we're going to come to somebody that wasn't in the video. I'm going to ask this question for Ivana. Ivana, how long have you been with Kensington Soccer Club, and how long have you been playing soccer? <laughs> Okay. And next, what we're going, who we're going to hear, I want to hear from is your sister Emmy, because I can almost guarantee you two kind of started at the same time, right? All right. And Esteban, how long have you been playing soccer? I have been playing since three. And let me see, Jocelyn, how long have you been playing soccer? I've been playing soccer since I was seven. Yeah. And I um, joined the organization four we years ago. Playing the same time class. And it was and SR, how long have you been Okay. And let me see who else? Normeen. How long have you been playing soccer and how long have you been at Kensington Soccer Club? Um, to be honest, I think I started playing soccer when I was like four. And I don't know how long I've been playing with Kensington, but all I know is I've been playing with y'all for a really long time. Yeah. Okay. And next we're gonna go to uh Tanaya. How long have you been playing soccer? I've been playing soccer since I was in fourth grade. I'm in seventh now. Um, and I've been playing with Kensington for three years or two. Okay, and finally, we're gonna get Anthony. Um, I've been playing soccer since I was two years old. I've been with Kensington since I was seven. Okay. And all of you guys enjoy your experience here at, at Kensington Soccer? Yes. And like I said, yeah. I've been with Kensington Soccer for the last four years, and I've been coaching for Kensington Soccer for the last four years. And honestly speaking, Kensington Soccer is really the greatest organization I've ever coached in, and I've coached all over all different sports, but I've never felt more like a family than I do at Kensington Soccer. Um, with that being said, we're gonna move on to the next question. And the next question is, you had to stop, we had to stop playing abruptly um, last March to return to play this fall, right? You had to take, we had to take strict safety measures in order to return to soccer. To our, how was it that for our, our program that we didn't play any games, but we were still able to come together as a family and as a team in practice? What was it like for you? And for that, I'm gonna start off with Samaya. It was pretty hard at first, like, because it was just, you know, starting. And then, like, it was it's becoming an everyday lifestyle now. Like, everybody online, everything is just <laughs> what it is now. So, I agree with you 100%. I go to, uh, I do a class every day online where I'm teaching after school, teaching soccer to kids after school. Um, and it's different for me. So I can really relate. So with that same question, Tanaya, um, how has the pandemic affected you? Um, not being able to play any games and we just practice and we got to play with uh, face masks on and everything. How has it affected you? It's been really hard because it the mask makes me slow since I have asthma and it, it, it's just making me slow down and I don't really know what to say, but it's been really hard because I just want to like play games and, and win and all this other stuff, but I can't do that since the Corona. 
Um, that same question, I'm gonna take the question to Yeah, We haven't heard from the sisters in a second. Yeah, yeah. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm, it's, it's been really sucky. Like, yeah, we all get to practice and everything, but the thing about soccer is we also like, like competing with other types of teams and winning those games and having a lot of fun. And then when you win those games, you feel such a massive boost of confidence and you feel great about, uh, about everything. And then after Corona came on, we had to start practicing and then we also had to start practicing with our mask on with which really sucked <laughs> we would be running laps all of us would be out of breath by like the half <laughs> uh so we go to so i can't hear you you're muted so we're going to go to Normeen. Normeen, I'm going to ask you that same question. Like, what has it been like? Like, you had a lot to say on the video. And I want to know what has it been like for you since we got back to playing and we had to wear the mask and we had to remain six feet apart and we weren't able to play any games. What has it been for you? How has it been? Um, for you? So, like, the mask was super annoying because when you, like, running, like, you're a... Uh, I don't know about y'all, but like to me, I get cramped so fast because when I run, I like to breathe through in my nose and like breathe out my mouth where I won't get cramps that fast. But I couldn't really do that because of the mask. And about the games, I, you don't know how I feel. Like I miss beating the teams. Like that's how I feel. <laughs> I just miss it. I miss it. That's it. And the six feet apart thing is annoying because yeah. So with that being said, since we came from like this pandemic era, right? And then we were able to play again, but I need for, I'm gonna take this question to Ryan M. And it's how has the pandemic continue with the, uh, affected your life? Well, I'm, I'm gonna start. come back to you, Jocelyn. Uh, I have like a paper and everything. Go ahead, buddy. All right. Well, I miss being out with my friends and I miss the teachers in school. It's so lonely, so alone. Well, I hope 2020, well, not 2020, I mean 2022 will be a better future for us to finish lives and careers for us. And I hope they make a vaccine. God bless all. That's why. All right, and I'm gonna take that same question to Lewis. Lewis, how has the the pandemic continuously affected you and your family? I mean, like physically, like it affected me a lot for the simple reason, like this is my senior year in high school, and it's like me knowing that I'm not able to go to an actual graduation or to like an actual like homecoming or something. Like I feel as though like the kids of this senior year we're gonna be left out off of all of that and like me knowing that I can't play my final soccer season like that affected me a lot for the simple reason like this is my time to shine and then it's like like me knowing that I'm not able to play my senior year like it affected me a lot and like last year in my soccer season I had got into a concussion my first game so I lost my whole entire season and it's like me knowing oh I can't play my senior year and then like I have no things that I can show future. Like, say if I want to be uh, going to college and going into an actual soccer team, I have no proof of my, I got no proof of my high school season for the simple reason of COVID. And it's like, with my family wise, I lost a lot of family, family members towards COVID. And like me knowing like, I can't see those people anymore just off of the disease that randomly popped up. Like it hurt me a lot. And it's like, like, I hope this vaccine works for the simple reason that I want to get back to school personally. <laughs> I want to get back into school. I want to, I want to live the life that we had before the vaccine. And like, I want to go out with my friends. I want to be able to go to the movies with people. Like I'm trying to have fun with everybody, but it's just all this happening. I'm hoping this vaccine works. Game but, yeah. Game 
<laughs> I know the virus affected me because I know, like I told you guys earlier that my mom passed on May 30th, but she passed from COVID-19. So when it was time to go back and practice, like I was really like excited, but then I was scared. Like what happens if someone gets sick or someone is affected and they bring it to practice. So I was really nervous too. Um, but and it continues to affect my life because I still have my dad here that I have to take care of. Um, even right now in my parents' house and like, this is where I chose to film. And when I look to my right, I see the big old picture of my mom and I'm talking to you guys and I'm trying to keep from getting teared and from tearing up. So I understand completely. I'm gonna take this question to uh, Anara. Where you at? <laughs> so, how has the pandemic continuously affected you and your family even now? Well, for the most part, I'm still kind of doing my art stuff. Uh, she's doing her own thing, but I, I, don't do anything. <laughs> I, I we have uh, some stuff in the works just, just to keep us occupied. So you know we're kind of it sucks not hanging out with people and it sucks to not be able to have my friends over because their parents are terrified within good reason of covid and it's it's super weird because it's like i i was never really a fan of going outside anyway before this all started and now i'm like i'm tired of this i want to go outside i want to go see people i want to go do things there's nothing open ever it's tiring talking to the same people mm -hmm. every single day <laughs> now it's just a routine wake up go say hi to mom after that go say hi go say hi to big brother after that go say hi to her and then just keep doing it again it's just a circle and it drives people mad it really does no wonder people be cutting their hairs and doing all this crazy stuff this COVID getting to everybody nowadays. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Trust me when I tell you, I feel it every single day. Next person, Tanaya, how has COVID continued continue to affect your life even now? So the way COVID is affecting my life is that like, I can't go outside. I can't see my friends. I can't do all this stuff that I really want to do, like play soccer. I can't do none of that. I'm afraid to go outside anyway. It's, I get scared because there's like COVID and stuff and people not wearing the masks and I don't like it. And I, plus I can't go to school, see my friends, can't get on the bus, can't do none of that. Can't see my teachers and see how they doing. Can't do none of that. It's too much. So we live in a city right now where uh, violence is real big, right? And especially among youth, we have, there's a lot of violence among the youth population in the city of Philadelphia. How has soccer been able to keep you guys on the right path? So I'm going to open this question and it seems like I got everybody, but I want to start with Jocelyn first. Jocelyn, how has soccer kept you on the right path? You know, I live in a neighborhood where they shoot almost every night. And it's not it's not fun. You you see you see bullets on the floor, you see all of that, and it's not fun. And soccer has kept me on the right path for a long time. So cause I go to a school where people fight. We have no activities there, any nothing like that. And honestly, soccer has um kept me going straight, you know, getting my grades up, not pressing my grades down. You know, it it was a rocky road in the beginning when I started playing soccer, but as I start moving on and meeting all my own all, all my closest friends, it started to get better. Better, I made a new family better. in my life. So, better. all right. And so, with this question, the next question, I want to go to uh, uh, Hennessy. We haven't heard from you in a while. How has soccer kept you uh, out of trouble? I kept you on the right path. Um, for me, I didn't really like 
do any sports before like all those people starting at seven I didn't have none of that um so I like when I got to high school I like started seeing all these people and I look got scared of it like I didn't even want to do it because I thought like oh everybody know what they're doing and I don't I felt left out so I started I did it and I felt like it really like it became escape like now like being on a field wasn't just passing a ball around and running like it really did like possibly affected who I was um and it became a part of me so now like not being on a field makes me feel weird um so I really like it really did keep me straight um and whenever like I was mad or anything I can just take all my anger out in a ball and kick it like how good is that so right I'm going to take the pass this this same question to Yaya um yeah you really like I've watched you grow as an athlete. I've watched you start from never playing before and really working and becoming a leader. I want to know how have soccer kept you on a positive path? When I first started, um, everything was a little bit rocky because my parents were like fighting a lot and they were having their own little like feud at that point in time. So I just really wasn't in like greatest state of mind. I was like more worried about like school and also like trying to get my mind off other things. And then you introduced it, you introduced soccer to me and I was like, wow, this is actually a pretty cool sport. And as the years have started going on, I like, I started feeling so much more confident than I did before. And then after my parents split, everything got so much better. Um, I, started getting so much confidence after I kept met new people. It was, it was great. I, this sport really did change my life. I was at a really bad place at that time. And y'all like really helped me out. And it also like kind of keeps us away from like streets and everything. Some of the streets, they be shooting around a lot. It's nice to not be out there and like have a fear that, oh my God, am I going to get hurt? Is this gonna happen to me? No, soccer really just helped me get my mind off everything. And it was just like a, a way to get out of this. Okay. So I'm gonna pass that same question to Julio. Julio, how has soccer kept you off the streets and out of trouble? You there? Julio? Yes, sir. Oh, there you go. Julio, how has soccer uh, kept you out of trouble, kept you on the right path? Well, soccer has been my life. Like, I feel like I feel like soccer just been a big part where I grew as a man. Okay. And um, I feel like without soccer, like, I wouldn't be in a position where I'm at now. Like, I didn't know, like, about life like I feel like it helped me build like my confidence up like my love to everybody in my family like I, I got dedicated to a sport and it just built me to a man I am today like it just made me Julio and I'm a person where I like I admire other people like and, and other kids look up to me like just the way I play and just the way I am like it just gave me a reason to like live for real for because there's not in, in the streets like Everything is bad. Like, I feel like soccer helped me become Julio. I just right. feel good. So what we're going to do now, listen, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of like, because we're running out of time, we probably have about 15 more minutes, and I know we want to ask, I want to know all of you guys want to talk. So I'm going to skip through some of the questions, and I'm going to talk, ask uh, some of the questions to some of the people we haven't heard from. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement, Black Lives Matter movement, has grown since the whole uh, since the world has seen the videos mm -hmm. of unjustified mm -hmm. killings, right by um, by the police. Like, what does Black Lives Matter mean to you? And I'm going to open this up to who's that? Anthony. That's who I'm going to open this up to. What does Black Lives Matter mean to you? Um. Black Lives Matter mean to me, like my life, especially me being Afro-Latino and seeing that 
still my people and my fellow African American people are getting killed by unlawfulness and police brutality. It's like kiss me at a straw. And then I was actually happy to see that in most Amer Latin American countries like Puerto Rico and you got most of South America and most of the Caribbean, like Dominican Republic and pretty much all of Latin America doing their Black Lives Matter protests peacefully. And I was like, these videos has actually opened up the world to see what America is like and what racism actually is. You know, I found that I'm glad you mentioned that because especially South America, because uh, two friends of mine play for the Philadelphia Union. And I remember right after that, they both went on the field during the game and took a knee and raised the fist, as well as you guys know that I'm a huge Real Madrid fan. So to see Marcelo and Vinicius Jr. also do that on their field, it meant a lot to me, even though I understand that a lot of those guys face, you know, a lot of racism on the pitch too. But to see them support the Black Lives Matter movement was really huge. Um, I'm going to go to if Emmy and Ivana is still with us. Can I get you guys to answer that question? What does the Black Lives Matter mean? Okay. Emmy and Ivana, what does uh, the Black Lives Matter movement mean to you guys? Um, it means a lot to me because um, I think that it's like, a lot of people would say that all lives matter and some people agree, but I think that you should just say like black do matter because yeah, everyone's life does matter, but it's like you don't see a lot of white people getting killed. You mainly see, mainly see a lot of black people that are getting killed and it's like um, the looting and stuff. I think there should be a different way to show justice for that. I don't think you should just like destroy um, stores because you're upset. I think you shouldn't just, instead of be silent, use your voice, but not in the way where you would loot, kind of just another way. And Emmy, what about you? How you feel about the Black Lives Matter? Um, so kind of what she said, like you shouldn't really have to be like, like ruining stuff like stores and stuff like there's no need for all of that like uh, there it just bothers me that people are doing that for no reason i mean they have a reason but like it just doesn't have to be that crazy um so from there i'm gonna take this next question and i want to ask anara and hopefully one other person can jump on this question we're really running out of time um what does equality mean to you? You, I can't hear you. We can't hear you. No sound. Is, there we, we go. Okay, cool. We go. Cool. Uh, but basically what uh to just to keep it short equality to me is just be kind to everyone we're all the same species of human being no matter what gender race uh sexual orientation all of that no matter what we're all the same breed of human we all have the same kind of bones mm -hmm. we all have we all bleed the same kind of blood there is no we're reason all... why we should all treat people different because of the color of their skin. We're all color of their skin means the nothing. It's more about character and how you act towards a person. Like if a person starts acting like a huge, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah I don't understand why. Every person. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. all the, the same anatomically, and that's yeah, we uh we developed into humans. We were monkeys first, and we developed into humans. Right. I'm with you. So I'm going to throw this problem, this next question to uh, two of our panelists. Um, and this is Julio and Genesis. I mean, Hennessy. Uh, Julio, let's start with you. What problems do you see around you? 
Like I drive around all the time and I see a bunch of problems and I can point them out and I can talk to them blue in the face. But I want to know from a kid's perspective, what problems do you see in your neighborhood or in the city of Philadelphia? Um, I feel like the problems are in Philadelphia is just like crime or whatever. That's what's around me. Like a lot of shootings, a lot of fighting. And that's basically all. Like I feel like the community should get back like together and like stand up for everything, but not in a, a violent way where it's like everything's supposed to be positive. Like it should be together as positivity. Like no crime, just everybody together, stand up for our rights. All right. And Hennessy, what about you? What do you see? Are like your answers were excellent. I really loved all your answers. And when you guys all spoke, I mean, often I had to catch myself and remember that I was talking to teenagers and young adults. So I want to um, ask you, Hennessy, like, what problems do you see around you? For me, um, I see a lot of drug. Um, I see poverty. I see homeless people. Um, I see, like, kids not getting their education. I see kids trying to, like, work for their families. They shouldn't have to do that. I know you have to work and stuff. Like, you shouldn't have to provide for your family at such a young age. Um, I see like the quality of the education is not good at all. Racism is like all over now. Um, so I think like, and the, the list just goes on and like, it shouldn't be that way. Um, so this is like, that's why like, we should come together and try to get ourselves together and try to fix what they built, which isn't benefiting us. So, so with that being our last question, um, because I want to give, you know, some of the, um, uh, the folks that are tuning in a chance to ask you guys a question. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Mario and see if anyone has you know, anyone in the audience have any questions for you guys before we uh, end. We have roughly around maybe around six, maybe a little less than 10 minutes. Um, Mario, is there any questions you have or any of the uh, attendees? Well, one of the questions that, that come in is um, whether or not and this is for all of you, is there a question that hasn't been covered that you would have liked Michael to have asked or that you would have liked to have answered on film? So is there any question that you can think of that just hasn't been, hasn't been covered? I think- Tanaya? Oh, sorry, Michael, I think Tanaya was, was about to, to answer. Oh, okay, Tanaya, go ahead and answer that question. The one where sock keeps you on the right path. The, the soccer, mm -hmm. the soccer. I think, Tanya, you're talking about how the, you like the question around how soccer's um, been able to help keep you, um, and sports helps keep young people on the right path. Is there any any new questions that you would have liked to that you that you you know that aren't part of the questions you guys came up with or? that were in the film that you'd like to have talked about? Or did you cover it all? Because you guys really went, you really put a lot of thought into those questions. You have one, Michael? Yeah, you know, I have one. And one of the questions that I wanted to ask is, what are you prepared to do to change your surroundings? Because we are trying to, at Kensington Soccer, we try to promote leadership. So, and I'm glad that many of you, you're a part of the organization and then you come back and you become coaches. So what are you prepared to do personally to change what's going on around you? That question was sent in by one of the uh, folks. I think Jocelyn is, Jocelyn, you have your hands up, go ahead. Okay. so. I want to change honestly. I want to when I grow up. I want to come become a, a chemist so I, like I can fix the pollution around where we live. Like it's so much pollution. You can see in the sky. You can see how dark it is. And the type is the scientific matter is that you see all this stuff on the ground. It's not really supposed to be here. So when it breaks down into the dirt, um, the stuff, the stuff, it contaminates the whole world. And that's not really that's not really right. You know, we all can, we all can get sick from this contamination. You know, just like how COVID came up. COVID, COVID could have been something from contamination from probably pollution. That's it's not it's not healthy for us to just breathe that stuff in. 
And so Ryan L, I'm think? sorry, Ryan L, he had a response. Um, Ryan, you want to chime in? Yeah, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this environment that we're in right now. I get everyone is living through rough times, especially during the pandemic. I know everyone's deprived. There's a lot of looting. There's a lot of gun violence. I get that. But think about it like this. The more we stand together, the more we have the ability to change everything. People here don't understand, but the most powerful thing in this world is knowledge. Without knowledge, we're not nothing. So if we all stand together, this entire environment, we could be the best country. No, not country, my bad. We could be the best city out of every other city, everything. We can be the best community out here. That's all. I agree with Ryan L. Yes, I absolutely agree with Ryan. <laughs> Me too. It was powerful. Um, before we leave, I want to run across this question. We have four minutes and I didn't get a chance to ask this question because I thought we was going to run out. But we just had the 2020 election. Some of you commented on the election in the film. I want to know this question. How, because we were on the field when we got the news that because of Philadelphia, Biden had won the election. I want to know how do you feel about the results of election 2020? Yeah, Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Okay, so there it it made me feel good because we got like we got a we got the person that was ruling yeah, yeah. our country out of here. Like he was just he was just tearing it down, and it was the worst experience ever. We have Biden. Biden is Biden. How can I say this? Like Biden is the less evil version of Trump. Mean? He's the less evil version. I'm telling the truth. He really is. He, they're all the same. They're all the same. Trump is the same. Biden is the same. He's just the less evil version. Like Biden would do some good things, but also he would do some bad things to tear to, to tear us down. But he will also try to build us up because he supports that stuff. He supports um stuff, but he doesn't support all this stuff. If you think of it, if hold up. And on. Here, if you think of it this way, real fast, um, that's what a coach does. You guys don't realize it that I tear you guys down and build you back up. I break your bodies down and I build you up into the athletes that I want you to be. And like you said, that Biden, you know, is the same. Yeah, he's the same. He's a politician. But if we're already broken down, how I look at it is we're already broken down. We're we're at a point where we have no place to go but up. And I mean, I latched on to Biden for, you know, that reason, like we have no place to go, but up. we're already separated. We came from eight years of really, you know, togetherness and unity, and then four years of separatism and hatred almost to the point where you can't even walk down the street. Uh, uh, Sunday, the Sunday after, um, uh, the, uh, Philadelphia pretty much gave uh, Biden the election. You know, it was so nice to go into a store and people were just being nice to each other. It, it, it caught me off guard. Like, if I'm waiting in line and somebody accidentally jumped inside, it went, an argument didn't jump. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was, I'm sorry. No, you can go ahead. People were just nice. It, the whole era, aura of the city just changed. Michael, let me pick up on something that Jocelyn and Ari Anthony and everyone has talked about. Um, because, you know, we talked about the fact that this is all about giving all of you a platform, right, to have the adults listen. And part of Jocelyn, what you're pointing out is that adults sometimes really don't, aren't showing the kind of leadership that they should be showing. And it's, it, it's, it's imperative for us to be able to listen to all of you who are going to be the next generation, and actually already are the generation of new leaders. And so we have about a minute left. If you could be president, any one of you, what would be the, what would you want to do to, what would you do to change things? I'll win right here. President. I'll Who win right here. Ryan. Go ahead. No, no, let me go, let me go. Oh, sorry. Who said, Ryan, go ahead, Ryan. If we get free healthcare, 
and we fix taxes. We if we can fix taxes and insurance and healthcare, everyone could possibly like I don't know how to explain it. Everyone can have an equal. When I mean, let me think about this equality. Everyone has an opinion on that, right? But think about it like this: your choices can change your equality. So let's say you go to Harvard, they paid they did the best equality they can get. But if someone goes out here and they're not paying attention in school and all that, and they say it's not fair to them, no, it is completely fair. It's your choice. So if you're the president, right, and you have the choice to make anything, it will be taxes, insurance, healthcare, and let's make college a freer option or less expensive option. So we can at least have people have better, let's say futures or something like that. Absolutely. Thank you, Ryan, for that. And I think Jocelyn, real fast, real quick, Jocelyn, we have like two seconds. Quickly. Jocelyn, do you want to add anything? Um, no, Ryan kind of, um, like covered it. He really did a good statement about it. Like, we could really fix this econ economy, like bring it down, bring it down the prices, so everything and like that. Because I want to go to college. I don't know about y'all. I want to go there. I want to become a chemist. I really do. <laughs> and you can. And you can. And I think that's a hopeful note, Jocelyn, to end this incredible um, conversation. And again, I think it's beautiful to end it on, on with your voices talking about change because it's going to be your generation that's going to lead to that to that change and so i think you know on behalf of everyone who's who's all the attendees um who've been you know on here with you sharing this this moment in time with you you know i, I just want to thank you for for your honesty for um taking the time to share your your thoughts on these really um uh, serious issues and um for taking the time to do that film you should be very proud of 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 that film and and proud of how how um of how you guys are doing you know through a period in history which is going to go down as one of the most challenging times um that that's just this country but the world has gone through so i just want to say to you thank you we're all very proud of you to stay healthy and safe Amen. i want to let Everyone know um, who's watching that in the chat is some information, a link to the Kensington Soccer Club. I want to thank you for really for being, you know, part of the Uptown Sports family. We're really honored and privileged to, to work alongside of you all, all of you. And um, I can't thank you enough. So I want to just say, you know, please have a safe, healthy, happy holiday and uh -huh. a happy new year. And I hope that at some point I'll be able to come back in touch with all of you down the road. So thank you all. Wait, before you go, I need to um, yeah. I need to tell Ryan something. You talk about all that stuff, but you forgot one main important thing. You forgot about global warming. Another issue which Jocelyn, if you're going to go into chemistry and things like that, perhaps you'll you'll be able to advance that issue. But that's another Ryan, thanks for raising that. Of course. That's like the worst issue around here, global warming. He right. Who could forget about global warming? Uh, Michael, you're, you're on mute, Michael. I'll give it to him. He's going to probably be the oh, best president we ever had. With that, I wanted to say we are actually out of time by like three minutes. This has been awesome. I wish we now not see. I wish we had a little bit more time because I didn't realize you guys were going to really show up like this. But I am so grateful that you were able to see this video tonight. Um, for the first time under these circumstances and then talk about everything and give us your honest opinion. It shows that the children of the world do have a voice and the world does affect you just as much, just as, much as it does the, uh, the adults. So again, I would like for you guys to keep up with all the good work and continue striving and working hard and continue to work for change. And I'm gonna turn it back to you, Mario, and we can end for this evening. I, I think, thank you, Michael, for that. You know, thank you again, all of you. And um, I wanna encourage, you know, maybe we'll do this again sometime. You guys were incredible. And please just stay healthy, safe, um, and have a wonderful, you know, holidays and happy new year to all of you. And for those again watching, um, tune in next year, uh, 2021, we'll continue to do 
uh, these series and others. And um, and again, I encourage you to, 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 to reach out to Kensington Soccer Club, learn more about the incredible work they're doing in Philly. Go Philly. You guys should be proud of your city and all that you guys represent. So take good care and thanks again to everyone. All right, good bye night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Night. Bye. 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 Bye.